Now, another event very important happens, and that is uh, a Jew who was a sahir. And sahir is uh, magic. And it's actually considered... Uh, it's considered... Um, some considered kufr. There's a riwayah on magic that it's kufr. If you practice uh, magic, it's, it's actually kufr. But it's a, considered a kabira and it's one of the mubiqat. Um, Sahir is a magician. And magic is real. Uh, people should not think it's, it's, uh, it's a joke. Obviously, uh, there's magic which is sleight of hand type of magic. And that's like uh, David Copperfield magic. People that are uh, masters of illusion, magicians. And it's really interesting because there's a... A magazine called Skeptic, uh, which is, it's a magazine by people that just don't really, they're doubtful about everything. Uh, Michael Sherman, uh, who's a professor of philosophy of science, I think, or the history of science, is the, the editor of it. And one of the people in there is this man called Randy uh, the Magician. And Randy the Magician goes around debunking mentalists and, and people who are... Um, uh, new age type people that make these kind of psychic claims and things like that. And they show how, because uh, he's a magician, he knows how it works. And there's mentalists that are very good. And what a mentalist will do is, for instance, uh, there'll, be, um, there, there'll be a large group of people, uh, an audience, maybe two, three hundred, and... Um, and the mentalist will, people, he's going to say, I'm going to help somebody communicate with a dead person. And so he'll, he'll start walking around and he'll say, I'm seeing a boat, a boat in water, and somebody out of 200 people, maybe somebody lost somebody drowning. And so they'll say, he'll say, did anybody lose a loved one drowning? And somebody say, yes, I did. And he said, oh, I'm seeing, you know, this and that. And, and these are... They, they call them hits. That's a hit. And they'll, they'll throw things around, but they'll just, if, if, it's not, if he's not hitting, he'll just pass it off. It, it's your husband. And no, it wasn't. Oh, it's your, uh, it's your son. Yes, it was my son. So cold hit, cold, he was cold, now he's hot. People forget the cold ones because he so quickly brings it back. And it's done with, you know, they base it. These guys study statistics and they work out, you know, what type in any given group, you know. Uh, so then, uh, like, he'll notice on her uh, necklace is a, a letter N. Uh, his name N. Did, does it begin with N? Yes! You know, and then, so they'll do this, and then people are completely convinced now. And, and some of these guys are masters. They're very good at it. Uh, that is not the type of magic that we're talking about here. That's just uh, clever trickery. Anybody can learn it. Uh, and uh, people make money at it all the time, right? Um, what the sihr here is uh, having to do with uh, magical incantations. You learn formulas, and uh, it's taught and transmitted. And the Jews have a lot of magic. To this day, uh, you can actually take classes on Jewish magic. Um, there are, and I was in a class when I was in the university called. Uh, magic, science, and religion. And one of the speakers that came in was a practitioner of magic and started teaching people potions like if they wanted somebody to fall in love with them, uh, what they could do. And what really troubled me about the class is that there were other people in the class that were saying, oh, I tried this potion and this, and this happened. And, you know, that people do practice it. So you think people aren't uh, practicing it. I was really shocked in this class which was a university class, people in their, you know, uh, late teens, early 20s mostly, and, and there were practitioners of magic in that class. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a higher percentage in a class called Magic, Science, and Religion, so people interested in magic would have taken the class, right? But the point is, there are people in this country that do believe in magic and practice magic. And if they don't like you, they, they learn things to do, right? And some of the things they do is like get fingernails, get hair... Um, obviously, people know about voodoo dolls, things like that, stabbing voodoo dolls with 
make an image of the person and stab it with needles. Uh, these type of things. Now, there's a lot of people laugh at them, but the point is, is that magic, we believe that it, it is uh, something that we should be very concerned with in the sense that we should protect ourselves from it. And you don't become obsessive compulsive. And a lot of Muslims obviously will use magic as a kind of, to explain uh, a lot of things that are inexplicable. So somebody gets sick, oh, so there's a magic spell on them, things like that. And it might just be that, you know, they haven't been eating properly. So uh, you have to be careful to turn it into something also that it's not. But uh, it is a concern, and the evil eye is a concern. There was a magician named Labid uh, in uh, Medina. He was bribed, probably by somebody from Beni Nabil, although there, there's not evidence about that. Uh, he was bribed to uh, cast a spell uh, on the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and also his uh, daughters who he had taught. And what he did is he tied knots. He got some hair from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he tied knots and he had his daughters blow on these knots, the nafakhat, the uqad. And they blew on the knots and then they took the knot into uh, and put it down a well. And what happened is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after that, certain things started happening to him that were troubling him that he would forget things. Uh, and... Uh, uh, when, when this happened, the Prophet Sallallahu became concerned about it, and then he went, uh, Jibreel Alayhi Salaam actually came, uh, he had a dream, in fact, where there were two angels, and they were discussing what had happened to him. And then Jibreel Alayhi Salaam came and told him where the knots were. And there's a difference of opinion. Uh, some say these were Meccan surahs, others say they were actually given at that time. The point is, he was given these surahs as a... Uh, right? These are called the Mu'awidatain, the, the surahs that yu'awiduka, they protect you from evil. And one of the things they protect you from is the evil of magicians. And that's why Muslims should say these every morning and evening at least three times. And it's what you say before you go to sleep. Because one of the things about sleep is shaitan has access to sleepers. It's a time when, when uh, you're in... Uh, really going, moving into a kind of unseen realm because the dream realm is uh, part of the unseen world. And so you're moving into an unseen realm and if you're not protected, then, then what's happening is uh, you, you're exposing yourself to danger. And that, that's one of the reasons why also if you do uh, uh, have relations with your spouse, then you should at least do the wudu or do uh, ghusl, preferably before you sleep because the angels of rahmah are there uh, when you're sleeping. There are angels of Rahmah that are there. But if you're in a state of Janaba, they, they, can't, they can't stay near you. And so you're exposing yourself uh, to danger. So these are things in the unseen world that we believe are real and uh, we, should, we should take them seriously. Now, what happens is uh, the Prophet ﷺ sent Sayyidina Ali to the actual well and he told uh, him to recite these surahs and he did and the knots were, were actually broken. And uh, he was freed from that. Now, for the Muslims, the, in, the great wisdom of this is that the fact that the best of creation, the Messenger of Allah, could be affected, even though it was very slight how he was affected. Other people can be affected to great degrees, but his spiritual protection from Allah was so powerful that he was not affected in any deep uh, way, but it was enough to disturb him. Uh, because things were happening that were not common for him to happen, like f forgetfulness. He was not a forgetful person by any means. I mean, he was the, you say the Zakirin. And so, uh, that, that troubled him. And, uh, and that's why Muslims should uh, recognize that if, if it could happen to the best of creation, it can happen to anybody. And, th and there are people that go into these states. Um, the, the Labid actually admits this that he did it, because the Prophet was told who did it, he admitted it, and the Prophet did not uh, actually kill him. Um, he told him that he was bribed to do it, and he actually uh, forgave him. Now, the next uh, major event, and just to say a few things about the Mu'awiyah Tain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in uh, the Allahu uh, Ahad is uh, a protective surah, and then, قَرَعُوا دُبِرَبِّ الْفَرَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَرَقِ 
You're seeking refuge from the Lord of the dawn. When the full moon, when it, there's different uh, interpretations of when the full moon, when it comes into, and this is something uh, that in many cultures, uh, you know, the idea of a, a full moon, obviously it's a point when, uh, just in relation to tides and things like that, um, there, there's things going on during that time, and the fact that we're 70% water, right, there, there is obviously something going on in the bodies as well. We don't believe in, uh, like astrologers who believe in the planetary effects on the, uh, the human being, but we do believe in asbab. In other words, there are obviously effects in terms of the moon and its effects on the earth uh, because of gravitational poles and electromagnetism and these things. I mean, there are realities to these things, but we see them as asbab and not uh, as mu'asirat. They have no uh, inherent effect on us, but Allah's creation is a creation of, of means. Um, and that's why some of the ulama say that's the wisdom of fasting during the, the full moon period because uh, you're lessening water and the intake of uh, food during that time, uh, that it's a good time uh, to do that. It's, it's kind of a spiritual uh, counterbalance to that period of time. And then others say, wa uh, uh, is about uh, shaitan. Uh, and also sexual energy. Waqasiqini uh, waqab is also when the person is uh, pulled by sexual energy, because that's obviously a time that you can, uh, a person can lose their rational uh, well-being and do something uh, that they regret uh, shortly thereafter. So uh, those are all uh, protections. Waqasiqini waqab min sharri nafasati fil uqad. Nafasati fil uqad is the evil of those who blow into the thing which means any uh, magician right? and the evil of the envier when he envies because the evil eye is often from envy uh, so people can't afflict you from their envy so that's a protection if you do that surah every day inshallah you'll be protected and then seeking refuge from whispering. And one of the things about this culture is that whispering is going on all the time. And there's subtle messages being sent out constantly within our culture. We don't, I mean, we're not even aware of a lot of this stuff. And, and, uh, and I also uh, would not... Uh, I, I know this sounds a little crazy or paranoid, but I would not be surprised at all if there are, uh, even on these websites and things like that, uh, I think people have to be really careful uh, going into the... And I'll tell you why. Um, in the 1950s, there's a book by Vance Packard, famous book called Hidden Persuaders. In the 1950s, uh, advertisers worked out that they could actually send subliminal messages uh, at very sh- uh, short uh, intervals, um, and they, they saw that, that uh, sales went up in the concession stands. In other words, what they would do is you'd be watching a movie, and they'd flash popcorn or show popcorn, but it was done in a frame so fast that your uh, conscious mind uh, was not aware of it, but the subconscious mind actually picked it up. And what people were doing is they'd be watching the movie and then suddenly, you know, popcorn or Coke. And they'd get up and, and you know, walk into the... They really did... This is not a joke. I mean, they really did do this stuff. And it was declared illegal uh, by, by the government. Uh, to do that, that you could not do uh, these type of things. Now, obviously, uh, this could really make people paranoid, but I I think uh, it should be a concern. One of the things that came out in Time Magazine or Newsweek was that in the Roger Rabbit film, uh, which I hope none of you saw, but um, in that film, there was a scene where they actually, um, there's apparently some female character I don't know if she was a rabbit or a human. She's a female character, a cartoon. And there's a scene uh, in imitating another pornographic film. Uh, they did, they slipped in very short frames of her uh, splitting her legs open. This is a cartoon and exposing genitalia uh, in the, and this came out in, uh, in uh, uh, major media magazine. And this was a children's film 
the, the cartoon people that drew it said it was a joke. 